as we know, for the past few years, this has become part of my day-to-day -day life. But in celebration of World EV Day, we thought it might be a good opportunity to get a broader perspective of where we're at. So global sales of EV surpassed 10 million this year for the very first time. And the world's best selling car was a Tesla, was an EV for the very first time. So sales of EVs are actually up by 38% here in the UK from this time last year. So from a personal experience level, back down to the most important factor for all of us drivers. Things are changing all the time. Every time I pull into a services lately, I realize, oh, there's more charges here than there used to be. And this one here at Lee Delamere is no exception. There are now one, two, three, four, five grid serve charges. And don't have to panic anymore about, oh, have I got the app for this one? Because I know that I'm going to be able to pay by contactless. So the whole experience of remote charging is becoming more and more streamlined. Uh, it's generally faster. There's more fast charging available and there's just more availability. Now we now have over 45,000 of these babies, remote chargers, and that's a 40% increase on July last year. Now, the thing is, which is really interesting, if we to continue to increase the amount of chargers at the same rate, then the government target of 300,000 by 2030 will actually be exceeded. So there are some government improvements in 23 that are key to our, this experience and the really important ones. Firstly, the cost must absolutely be displayed clearly, so transparency of costs. Secondly, no more turning up, well hopefully no more turning up and the thing's not working because they're asking for 99% reliability on charges over 50 kilowatts and you see here this key 24 hour support seven days a week that also is one, going to be one of their enforced regulations so no more phoning up saying the charge is not working and actually there's no one on the other end of the phone once you have selected your output finally the joy of contactless is to be available on all chargers, so no more of those apps. And globally, we're looking at more collaborations, which is really interesting. So if you're a Ford driver like me, then you're looking at a future where you will be able to use Tesla chargers because currently only for uh, North America and Canada, Tesla and Ford are collaborating. So Ford drivers, Hi. Ford drivers will get an adapter and will be able to use Tesla chargers. Whole new world opening out there. All right, excuse the Mary Poppins impersonation there. However, to make the point, it's World EV Day. It's not all about us. It's also about what's happening in the rest of the globe. Well, it seems to be Europe, America and China leading the way. In China, one in four vehicles on the road is EV and get this one, over 60% of the cars registered in the world that are EV are in China, which is really interesting. Now, Biden is storming off on his path to net zero by 2050. So in order to accomplish that, by 2030, he's asked for half a million public charges to be installed and 50% of all car sales to be EV. Now, bear in mind how big America is and also bear in mind that who knows if that's 
actually going to happen. He's just asked for it back in February. Meantime, it's Norway really leading the way with 88% of their car sales being EV. So as well as collaboration, we're also looking at innovations. Something like, say, Kerbo Charge, right? Which is in itself not going to change the world. However, if you haven't got off-street parking, but you can have an EV and you can have a charger on your house, this is going to mean the difference between having an EV and not having an EV potentially. So with innovation, it's not necessarily one big thing that's going to change the world. It's lots of little innovations. Obviously, one of the big uncertainties about EV and of course for much discussion has been batteries. You know, how long will they last as in how many years? Um, where do we get them from? How do we manufacture them? All of those questions and queries over long-term battery supply and use. Manufacturing wise, we've lost a huge opportunity with the loss of British Volt, which was going to be a huge manufacturing plant here in the UK. But that now is slightly offset by news from Jaguar Land Rover that they're going to build a huge manufacturing plant in Somerset. Um, and manufacturing of batteries remains a big issue, but batteries themselves have come a long way. And when I say they've come a long way, literally, they have and are coming a long way. Excuse the bumps on the lane, you know, the butthole thing. So we're finding out that batteries are going, in some cases, hundreds of thousands of miles longer and further than, they, than we thought they would. Um, we're finding ways to fix and upgrade them that we didn't know about before, we're finding ways to recycle them as well. And there are lots of initiatives so that when they do come to the end of their EV life, they're actually being used to store energy. So as we go on this EV journey, technologies and innovations are appearing that are helping us make the most of this battery stuff. So, here we are, World EV Day 2023. And you know what? It feels quite good to me. We've got an increasing, more reliable range of charges. And on the whole, I think we're headed in the right direction. There are, of course, pros and cons. There are rumors even that that 2030 deadline is going to be pushed back. And we've got Chinese cars starting to flood the market. So where will that take us? Who knows? But I'm feeling like I'm in a good place driving EV right now. What I'd love to know is what do you think? What's your feeling? Drop a comment. Where's the future taking you?